Hello everyone, uh, this is Dr. Shahar Khan. I'm here with a wonderful patient of mine. So she is um, uh, uh, three days out from her surgery um, and it's a pleasure to bring um, our patient on. Um, and so she had implants done 16 and a half years ago. What were the silicone cohesive gummy bear implants? Um, and we're gonna hear directly from her. Um, so thank you very much for coming on and sharing your journey. Um, now, please tell me, uh, when did you get your implants? I got my implants when I was about fifth, early 50s uh, in 2008. 2008. And these were the silicone implants, which were yeah. the gummy bears. Yeah. The safer, better. They were introduced into the market uh, after 2007, when the implants were reintroduced into the market as the gummy bear cohesive, like I said earlier. Now... Tell me what, um, and you're 71 years of age now, yeah. what led you to seek an explantation? Like, what, why did you want to get an explant? You know, uh, breast implant illness took me totally by surprise. I had been experiencing different levels of pain and all these idi idiosyncrasies in, in my health uh, over, like, over a 10 year period. And uh, at a Christmas gathering at the end of 2023, uh, I was saying, I should probably go to bed, I'm, you know, blah, blah, blah. And my daughter said, you know, Mom, this could be your implants. And, I mean, my jaw just went crash. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'd never even heard of breast implant illness. Ever. So what were those symptoms that you were going through? I just basically had pain all over my body. And I can remember the earliest pain starting in my feet and being in my feet and my legs and just this funny kind of cramping and hard to sleep. I didn't have restless leg, but um, just really uncomfortable always, 24 seven. And um, uh, my hair is falling out and my eyes became dry and my vision changed a little bit. And um, I can't really think of everything right now. The predominant one is the pain. and. I went to podiatrists and I've gotten so many x-rays and just really trying to chase this down with uh, and then at the end of last year <clears throat> my doctor started discover you know thinking about some other things and we discovered that I most likely had polymyalgia rheumatica mm -hmm. which um, I don't think I have polyrheumatic uh, myalgia mm -hmm. rheumatica I think I have breast implant illness no, with those no, symptoms no did you have fatigue I really haven't had fatigue. Got okay, yeah. good. How about brain fog? Definitely, and it really uh, had an effect on my ability to work. Now, let me ask you this. This is what I hear, you know, like consistently with the many young ladies, ladies perimenopausal in their 50s, and certainly you. Now, someone will say, and like, you know, you're 71, you're supposed to have some dementia. You know, you start like, you know, me too, you know, I mean, and the point I'm trying to make is as we all get older, we get forgetful, we get tired, we get the joint pain. Why did you not say it's the fact that you're 71 and it's not, uh, it's the breast implant illness? Oh, trust me, I, as I was, before I'd learned about breast implant illness, I had a reason for all of it, you know? I thought, oh, this must have happened or must be because of this job or because of this happened. I, that's the funny thing. The body, I think, can only have so many symptoms. Mm -hmm. So it could be any multiple of things. But when I learned about the breast implant illness, there's so much information on social media about that now. And I began looking at the symptoms of BII. Well, all my symptoms fit into BII. Mm -hmm. And that wouldn't be the case individually. Now, how sure were you before you came? Because this is a big deal for you. You know, you're in California. Yeah. You got San Francisco right next to you, and you have all the other, like I would say, thousands of plastic surgeons there, and you have this physical move to come here to basically get the surgery done, plus the financials, plus you have to make arrangements because you had to hire the care uh, taker as far as for the first 24 mm -hmm. hours to help you with the recovery because you know you just had a grandbaby nine days ago, and now. You know, why Why did you, let me ask you this, what type of research did you do that led you to believe that this is what you have? 
Like I said, there is a lot of information out there. There's a lot of people that have been um, <clears throat> organizing and, and it just even like showing up with the FDA to get the, well, black box warning, but the FDA calls it their new guidance. And you have to respect these people. They've overcome this illness themselves and then they're such an advocate going out there, you know, to make, to bring this awareness for other women. But I mean, I gotta tell you, one of the main reasons I, I chose you, Dr. Khan, is I just really felt safe to come here. Like, you don't do implants and you every day educate about breast implant illness. So, uh, so BISA, um, uh, Cicely Henderson, GGAP, Global, um, there's just so much out there now, besides the many, many, many women that are just putting their story out there to perhaps help another woman mm -hmm. understand what could be happening. Because your doctor's not gonna be able to help you. Right, I know this is, I use the word, very unfortunate because just like I do not know anything about pediatrics, I do not know much about cardiology, rheumatology. Remember, that's not my field of specialty. Yes, and I'm, I'm an MD, I'm a physician but I'm a plastic surgeon. My specialty is the implants, and clearly, as you will see, there is a lot of information from the FDA, a lot of the black box warning, there is the, a lot of information from the manufacturers themselves that tell you the warning that we have discussed on the private uh, breast implant illness support group page and also on YouTube. And then most importantly, you have the patients attesting to the fact that they're gonna only improve once uh, the implants are removed in the fashion and in the manner that you were very well versed on. Now, how sure were you that it was the implants before you made the trip? Well, I absolutely couldn't be sure, but I felt very sure that if I didn't remove the implants, I perhaps would never have my opportunity to recover. Now, what, what type of research, how long did you spend like networking, researching, and reading and processing this data? 10 months, 10 months. every day. Every day, yeah. Every you're very well months. versed. I can give you a board and a marker and you can give me a lecture on BI, oh, okay. you know, and, and I can tell because you were, it makes, uh, it takes a lot of determination uh, to come all the way from California. Now, now you had a choice, you told me, amongst the many other surgeons, correct? How and why did you end up choosing me? Well, the, the kind of person I am, I'm definitely going to support a doctor that does not do implants. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I, I would much rather work with a physician that not only has created a proven technique, has a following of women that are very happy with their results, I mean, aesthetically and getting well, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so all that's very attractive, but I didn't have... I, you know, I'm, I'm actually almost, I'm about to turn 72 years old, and there was, I, I didn't see any reason for me to be thinking of this as like, I mean, of course I care what I look like, but I wasn't thinking of like, you know, do I want to get a fans, fat, fat transfer? Do I want to get a lift? And everything you did is like top shelf, but minimalized, like it wasn't complicated. You're going to do the very best explant technique and then I have a chance to get well because I had just not felt myself in over a decade. Mm. Now, very interesting. Now I just want to emphasize fat transfer is not a good idea at all because that fat that is transferred, some of it will take good, but a good third of it will, or uh, a good third of it, 30 to 50 percent will die on the face where they do the fat transfer, 30% of the fat inevitably dies, even though they're using 10, 15 cc's. So on the breast where they use 100, 150 cc's, a third of it will potentially get absorbed, let's say hypothetically speaking, even when we're doing the best technique, but some of it will die, some of it will form clumps of that fat, fat necrosis, sometimes some pain, neuropathic pain can occur. And now when the lady's doing her self-monthly breast exam to pick up on breast cancer, this mass might be a breast cancer and the patient might think it is part of that fat necrosis. Or if she's getting her mammogram, this might get picked up. And I see these patients 
who are unfortunately getting these unnecessary biopsies because of the dead fat, and but they have to rule it out. Now, this is where, you know, the fat grafting to the face, excellent idea to the breast tissue. I've said this, um, you know, I, I would consider this malpractice because now one out of eight or nine women who are going to get breast cancer, now they're not going to be able to screen themselves effectively wow. because now they have these irregularities and nodularities that show up on the chest breast area and that can throw the patient off, can throw the mammogram off and the self monthly breast exam. Now the other thing here is, you know, you know, in your case, look, this is not the time to be doing a lift. And I'll tell you, having done your case and there was a lot of contouring how different the right side was compared to the left. Yeah. It was almost twice the size as the left as you can see. I was actually very pleased and what would you say about how you look because I remember you told me doc I'm 71 uh, you know get me flat chested remember I said no absolutely not I'm going to do the same care and attention aesthetically as I would a 35 year old because you deserve the best and I was actually very pleased and at least on my end I would say you did not need the drains now you're three days out and truly clearly uh, you know, for 71, going on to 72, a lift would be unjustifiable because that may lead to problems, skin necrosis, among others. If you ask me, every 72-year-old or 71-year-old lady will not only need a breast lift, but she will need a neck lift, face lift, thigh lift, arm lift, right? Does that mean that we do it? No. And I'll tell you aesthetically, had you had a twin sister, I'm as pleased as you will be. And now you can go ahead and comment as to how you look compared to before and after. Well, I've only had a peek at myself yeah. today, three days after my post-op yes. today. But I feel really encouraged because I feel like for me, I probably look better now than I would have been naturally with, you know, never having plastic surgery mm -hmm. just like you're saying the age and gravity and my skin type and everything um i'm very very pleased with uh uh what you've done Dr. Sure, no, thank you and and the other thing i want to say personally about myself so i don't leave this out is um you know ever since i've had my implants it has changed my life because i have felt like i've had two ice cubes in my body and for the first time in almost in over 16 and a half years my upper body is warm mm -hmm. because i figure what's happening is there's no circulation through that mass that i allowed to be put inside myself mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it, that's a relief mm -hmm. now what led you because you came in with an mri proven rupture on the right and a questionable rupture with infolds on the left what made you get the MRI? Well, I wanted the MRI because I wanted to cross my, all my T's and dot all my I's because I am going to go to my insurance company and I just wanted to have as much uh, material to present to them why I, you know, couldn't get to get help with because this is out of pocket, as mm -hmm. we all know, this is out of pocket. so. That's one reason why I did it. And also, I was pretty sure just from how my breasts became different many years ago that I probably had a rupture. Um, I'd heard of a rupture. And so I felt like in order for me to say to a plastic surgeon, I have a rupture, I had to have the MRI because my understanding is that is the best uh, method to detect that. That is correct. To look for a rupture, a silicone rupture, uh, the MRI without contrast is the best imaging test that's out there to uh, see if it's ruptured or not. Not a mammogram and not an ultrasound. Uh, now, what is interesting is the, the uh, I did the Facebook Live and when I removed that implant and the capsule and all that inflamed tissue, the implant had disintegrated. There was nothing cohesive about it. It had literally fallen apart versus the left one was intact and you could see the stark difference between the two. And these set of newer, better gummy bear implants are not safe. They're not, they're the same material, if you will, as the 80s and 90s that led to the band in 1992. 
And the point here is they are not lifetime devices. They're not meant to be in the body forever. And for someone who had them now almost 16 and a half, 17 years from 2008, it was indeed very much time for you uh, yeah. to remove them. Yeah. Uh, just the time alone in itself, plus obviously the reason, the rupture, plus yeah. the symptoms of breast implant illness. And you know, we will continue to hear from you uh, so that you continue to see the benefits you have had as you go back, you have the peace of mind, all of the capsule is removed, and that it is being processed by the pathologist. CD30 analysis is going to be done, and uh, we are going to roll out the BILCL. Now, what would you say to someone who is listening that, you know, these symptoms were because you were 71, this is all in your head, that this was just part, yes, you had a rupture, so what? Um, this is unfortunately what the system makes you or leads you to believe uh, you know there are other surgeons that I've heard repeatedly say well yes it's ruptured don't worry about it because you're not showing any signs of uh, silicon mastitis or silicon granulomas or irregularities so you can be living like that what would you say uh, to the group of patients who question that this is not required and this was your choice and not where you were, quote, lack of a better word, forced into getting them out? I don't know what to say to that. I, I, I feel like for me, time is going to tell. I already feel like I can take a, a true deep breath now. I don't know why. I never felt like my ribs could expand. I feel I've had so much funny feelings in my legs for so long, and they really do feel different. They, they just they don't feel so ouchy, you mm -hmm. know? And um, I don't really know how to answer that question. I think for me, when I got my implants, I did a lot of study on who would be the right plastic surgeon to implant me, but I didn't know to really research the implants themselves. I don't think there was a lot of information at that time. And uh, I trusted the FDA. At that mm -hmm. time in my life, I trusted the FDA. So I know for sure I would say to somebody now that was thinking about getting uh, implants, I would say go to the FDA site, go to the mentor site, go to the allergen site, go to wherever you're going and see if they mention these um, cancers that are breast implant affiliated and they mention um, all the symptoms that women have been struggling with of the breast implant illness. They know it's going on. There's just too much money to be made to stop. Mm -hmm. No, thank you very much for sharing your journey. We'll continue to hear from you. Uh, thanks. Uh, you know, I just want to end with my thought. It is not healthy and normal uh, to have ruptured implants. Uh, they are not lifetime devices, as mentioned by the FDA and by the manufacturers themselves. The longer you have them, the higher the chances are that ladies are going to have problems. And this is for the many ladies who have the symptoms. There's a questionnaire that you can check off. Uh, you can certainly, if you want to get the MRI without contrast, there is no radiation, there is no contrast, and you'll be able to get a lot of information. Remember, if you look at the mentor advertisement, the mentor itself, they tell you get an MRI at year three, and then every two years they're onward. Um, so technically speaking, you should have had at least seven MRIs, correct? Yeah. In the length of time that you had your uh, implants. And so the, your goal right now is to educate yourself, listen to what the FDA is saying, the black box warnings, the manufacturer's warnings, and most importantly, listen to the many ladies who are hurting and who are benefiting from getting an explant where you have the peace of mind that there was nothing exaggerated. It's all as natural as natural can get. Plus, aesthetically, you have a very good sound result, even if you're 71, and that everything is tested between the pathology, the microbiology, and the implants are returned to you, the 322 textured implants. What's interesting is about you, you thought they were smooth, correct? And it turned out that they were textured to, to your Turns out they recalled in 2019 and yeah. they didn't even contact me. Right. So this is where, if you look at the literature, Ellergan was supposed to have reached out to you and uh, to basically made you aware that these are notorious as far as their association with the BILCL. And this is where you just want to, and this is 
should not come to you as a surprise. This should be information that you should say, yes, my plastic surgeon told me all of these things and I'm well aware. And unfortunately, no surgeon discusses the detrimental effect of the implants because it will only scare the patient away. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed Michigan. <laughs> All right. And the nice uh, cold here, and yeah. have a safe trip back home. She has a flight back to San Francisco at 1 o'clock or 4 o'clock later Four. today. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, thank you. All right. Thank you all.